now that you're in school, you get this question all the while. Have you ever thought about if you didn't have a famous face or a famous name, you still get asked the question. And the question is, what do you do? And there you are. You have to answer that question each time it comes to you. And now your response clearly defines whether this is a conversation starter or it's an ender. And it could be at your workplace, it could be if you're out on a date, or it could be even at an interview. But let's rewind a little bit. Let's rewind to the time when I was a little kid. Uh, I must have been around uh, seven, and I often get this question. Um, I'm sure you do too. It will often get asked when you're in a group, what do you do? And all the kids around me would suddenly have answers and they'd want to be uh, lawyers and teachers and engineers and astronauts and other whatnots. And me, I'd hesitate. I'd hesitate because if you'd met my younger self, you'd know that I didn't have a clue about what I want to be or what I'd want to do. And that was it. One evening after school, I must have been maybe eight or nine, and I was spending a day doing absolutely nothing in and I suddenly saw a choir in rehearsal, the pianist, rows of singers with their music sheets. And I was so excited, it was all so beautiful. And suddenly, the music sheets fell off the music rack. I rushed in to pick up those sheets. The pianist asked me, would you like to come help me turn the pages? And I thought to myself, uh, how bad could this be? But that's where it started. First as a daily affair, then as a weekly one, and then month after month, year after year, all I do was turn the pages. So I thought, there's something more I can do. I could probably sing or play the piano or something, but no. So maybe I resigned to the thought that maybe I'm not wired for this after all. Maybe I'm just destined to be a page turner. And then suddenly one day, out of the blue, the pianist asked me whether I'd like to join the choir. And there I was nervous. And I said, uh, but I don't know how to do anything. And she smiled at me. And she told me what she'd been teaching me every day for the past few years. She taught me to turn the pages. I'd have to turn them at the right time. Too fast, and she'd miss the notes. Too slow, and she'd miss the opening bars of the next page. And there I was, a page turn. And who knew that in this page turning, I get my first formal lessons that would lead me to go on to conduct choirs and write music. And like that, it followed. My school librarian allowed me extra hours to browse on the condition that I help a catalog. A policy advisor gave me access to newspapers from across the world, and a blind lady taught me to identify bird calls. There was this constant state that something's happening, somewhere that's happening, point me in that direction. I had these tailwinds every now and then, right through school and right through college. And that's when I started to meet people much younger than I was. Some of them half my age, maybe closer to the age of some of you here in this uh, room. Some of them interned with me, others needed mentoring. Some of them just asked me for the Wi-Fi password in my office, and it went on. I'm in touch with most of them. Uh, two of them are authors. Uh, some of them have become strategists. And very recently, uh, we worked with some PhD students. And now they're on their way to spending a week in France because they, they've gone on to win some award. One day, I walked into a room with three smarties. The youngest was 19. The eldest was 24. All of them multi-TEDx speakers. They were building 3D printers, they were setting up fab labs, and drawing lessons from the lives of refugees on the other side of the world. Deepak Ramola often asked the question, what happened to you? Now, if you let this question soak in, you realize the potent of it. And if you really think about it, the responses point towards the perception you have of yourself, your most visible self your construct, your many journeys. And in that instant, I saw the wisdom behind Isaac Newton's giants. From journalists to editors, I've had mentors, data scientists, environmentalists, 
thanks to my many interests, I've interfaced with food connoisseurs, um, opera singers, musicians, and it just continued from there. There was this constant need for me to learn something new. And I realized I'd become an explorer, a collector of experiences, constantly observing and learning just like the page turner. And soon, natural curiosity got the better of me. I started tracking the millennials, or the Generation Y, especially those born between 1981 and 84. This special cohort went on to create Facebook, Instagram, Quora, Reddit, and then I discovered Generation Z. And that Generation Z is where most of you today are. Global citizens, visually engaged, educationally transformed, socially defined. You are the technoholics, talking to Siri, Alexa, Cortana, gaming with augmented reality. The interesting part is you're doing all of this in the course of a single day. And while I'm getting to know you, the fourth industrial revolution is gaining momentum with buzzwords like artificial intelligence, robotics, and autonomous devices. And there's talk that 5 million jobs will be lost before 2020. But on the flip side, about 2 million jobs are going to be created from these new fields. So I've decided to play futurist. We may require different thinking hats for the challenges we already have. Who knew that non-polluting mobility would lead to Google hiring for these strange positions? And now this. Data analysts are predicting that we're going to have a workforce crisis in 2030. That's 12 years from now. And that's exactly when you will be a cohort of relatively highly skilled, digitally connected subset within this prime working age group. So what skills should you have, the workforce of the future, to gear up for this next industrial revolution? It's time to get away from the traditional way we've been working, uh, maybe not five or six days a week, but spending 60% of our time doing our work and 40% of the time learning. And since AI and robotics are going to take care of the repetitive tasks, there's enough of time to do moonshot thinking. After all, it's time to build the hyperloops, the flying taxis, be telepresent, evolve into inorganic life forms, and transcend the boundaries of our planet. LinkedIn says that job titles are out, and an agglomeration of skills, including communication and critical thinking, is where the needle is pointing. This amazing culture has already begin, begun with the education that you've been getting, equipping you to enter the workforce. You will have overlapping skills, transferable and adaptable, to reskilling for newer opportunities. Welcome to the rise of what I call the Uber Slash. Uber Slashies are veritable powerhouses. They aren't people with single identities but a plethora of skills and talents aggregated with several slashes. Throughout history, we've had our fair share of Uber slashes. Da Vinci transcended the borders of science and art with theories on tectonic plates, ideas for helicopters and solar power. Benjamin Franklin, in addition to being one of the founding fathers of the United States, also went on to invent lightning rods, bifocals, and also the first lending library, Aristotle, the philosopher, but beyond that, he was a zoologist, a musician, a metaphysicist, and so much more. And who knew that Justin Bieber could have records other than his platinum ones? Angelina Jolie is a pilot. Mark Zuckerberg is fluent in Mandarin. Warren Buffett plays the ukulele. And Sergey Brin brought his love for paragliding when he inaugurated and launched the Google Glass. All Uber slashes. This brings us to an optimistic future, defining why and how we live where we do. Thanks to this new urbanism, we could live anywhere. Thanks to virtual reality, augmented reality, telepresence, the promise of off-grid energy, and reliable autonomous delivery with the drones, of course. Smart living will take precedence over smart cities, walkable streets, breathable air, desirable lifestyles, rather than just the dependence on futuristic technology. The trajectory from now till the foreseeable future isn't linear, and there's no silver bullet. We need to bring everything we've learned if we need to follow 
our interests and unleash critical innovation. Globally, workplaces are evolving both in design and culture to welcome a new breed of Uber slashes. Talent developers are already seeing a gig economy where a highly mobile young talented workforce come in on short term contracts, add values and then they move to another gig somewhere around the world. And with MOOCs becoming the new normal, this diverse workforce has given rise to the term just in time, preferring to learn at their own pace, at the point of need. As an Uber Slashy, I've been an adventure sports instructor, a CEO, a baseball player, a calligrapher, and a radio jockey. Now, I'm writing myself into a future by being at the confluence of science, technology, social innovation, and design. At the Makers Asylum where I work, we collaborate with a superlative cult of unlike-minded people. Doctors, engineers, synthetic biologists, artists, urbanists. It's amazing to guide all these enthusiasts through design thinking and then watch them prototype. And now you'll be surprised because this is not futuristic technology. Flying cars, bionic prosthetics, paragliding wheelchairs, drones, robots, Google Cardboard, satellite ground stations, medical devices. This is the future. We are building to the spirit of collaboration with the diversity of people, aggregating their counterintuitive skills and their interests. It is the power of this thinking that's influencing industry and governments to accept ideas not necessarily from within their walls. Getting this attitude of co-creating, community design, and curiosity-driven right can solve all the problems we have today. As Uber Slashies, we will be much sought after because of our incredible ability to take on many roles and our experiences will be transferable across disciplines. So let's be fantastic at being ourselves. That's the deal. We can't let the future just happen. Thank you.